Hello students, this is the next video which I have prepared for you. Uh, I am explaining the poems of Jayanta Mahapatra. In one video lecture, I provided you the material related to uh, the poetry of Jayanta Mahapatra, his background, major themes in his poetry. Now, in next video lecture, I explained, I gave a detailed analysis of the poem Don at Puri, which is prescribed in the course. Now, in this video lecture, we'll discuss the poem Indian Summer. Now, in my introductory uh, video lecture, I told you that uh, when you talk about post-independence Indian English poets, now A.K. Ramanujan, R. Pathasarthi and Nisim Ejikil, they are actually the new poets who sowed the seeds of modernism in Indian English poetry. And we uh, can call them uh, the poets belonging to the first generation of the post-independence Indian English poets. Jain Mahapatra equally plays a very significant role in the post-independence Indian English poetry and he belongs to uh, or he is one of the important poets of the second generation of the uh, Indian English poets. In my uh, introductory lecture, uh, I told you about uh, the background, his uh, Christian background, then uh, the impact of uh, Hindu myths, legends uh, on his personality. So ultimately the kind of poetry which emerges is uh, uh, meditative, introspective and uh, dialectical hyper serious poetry. That is, uh, uh, you know, the kind of poetry which emerges out of the personality of uh, uh, Jain Mahapatra. It's it's uh, introspective. It's it's uh, meditative. It's uh, dialectical, hyper uh, you know serious poetry, and there are certain you know uh, uh, images, symbols which recur uh, in his poetry. Uh, we have the images of stone, temple, um, you know rain, crow, uh, sleep. Uh, absence, solitude. So these are actually the, you know, images, the symbols which recur in his in his poetry. Now, uh, coming to the text, uh, uh, the poem, Indian Summer. Now, uh, this poem, Indian Summer, is one of the most uh, anthologized uh, poems of uh, Jayanta Mahapatra. And uh, as you know that in, in the poetry of Dhan Mahapatra, uh, theme of hunger, starvation, poverty, destitution, uh, this is very uh, prominently uh, discussed and dealt by the, by the poet. Now, uh, like for example, uh, if you talk about uh, hunger, starvation, etc., grandfather which is prescribed in the courts, we have the same kind of theme uh, there also. In the poem um, Hunger, we have almost the same theme. Now this poem which we are going to discuss uh, is uh, Indian Summer, which is one of the remarkable poems of uh, Jayan Mahapatra and the most anthologized uh, poems in the poetry collection. Now, when you read this poem, this poem is actually significant for its uh, imagery. And uh, I, I told you in the beginning that uh, he wrote his poems under the impact of the imagist poets like T.S. Eliot and uh, um, Ezra Pound. And uh, so, you know, for, for imagery, this is very significant. And also for the uh, choice of the words, very uh, uh, small poem uh, is this and selection of the words is very uh, significant and the compactness so we have uh, the exact imagery we have uh, the perfect choice of the words 
and also we have the compactness but if you uh, i mean read the poem the woods are lovely dark and deep stopping by woods on a snowy evening the opening lines which i have just recited the poem seems quite simple at a superficial level but frost is famous for deceptive simplicity now this the diction uh, in this poem has deceptive simplicity uh, it conveys uh, much more what it seems to be at the superficial level uh, now this poem uh, describes as the title suggests uh, a typical indian summer but uh, you find out in this poem that this is also uh, Um, a veiled commentary on the suffering woman so two important issues which are dealt here in this poem that i'll tell you later while explaining the poem now uh, you see this poem uh, was first published in his collection of poems called a reign of rights and i told you that this poem is significant for the choice of the words for the compactness uh, for the for the images so i'm reminded of uh, a famous saying by william shakespeare brevity is the soul of wit now uh, you have studied francis bacon whose aphoristic style is very significant because he tries to put more and more ideas in less and less words so this kind of brevity is the soul of wit and that uh, aphoristic style of bacon can be seen here in the sense that the poet has tried to put more and more ideas in less and less uh, words now uh, uh jain mahapatra actually he is against uh, you know flat stat- statements and against any kind of uh, uh, paraphrasability he you know uses concrete uh, compressed uh, and you know very precise uh, images he avoids uh, excessive uh, verbiage uh now uh, in this poem he has uh, uh, used uh, the free words and very uh, ordinary language just as i have uh, you know told you and he describes he depicts the atmosphere of a summer indian summer which occurred after long period of devastation now uh, look at the poem uh, indian summer 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 11 11 lines are there but you know uh, the poet has uh, uh, you know put more and more ideas in uh, this small poem of you know 11 lines uh this poem uh, you know uh, when you read this poem uh, it it uh, gives uh, it presents a uh, few pictures before us and uh, the pictures are by no means uh, interconnected uh, but you know the pictures are actually related to the uh, phenomenon which is associated with uh, this country now four five uh, uh, pictures are you know there in this poem now uh, the first picture you will find out uh, in the first line that is the you know the blowing of the uh, the wind and uh, then you have uh, let me also uh, take the uh, text of uh, uh, this poem indian summer now uh, so uh, you have uh, this uh, the first picture of this wind blowing then again you have this picture this picture this is uh, uh, 
the mouth of India opens. Then you have this picture, crocodiles. Then uh, you have this uh, this heated midden smoke under the sun. So these are the four or five pictures which the poet has created, you know, before us. The vision in this poem is quite tragic, quite pessimistic, quite, you know, uh, melancholic. Uh, now, uh, uh, just, you know, read first three lines. Over the sowing of the somber wind, priests chant louder than ever, the mouth of India opens. Now, the first line actually creates a very gloomy, bleak, dull, elegiac, you know, atmosphere. Sowing, mourning, wailing, somber, uh, gloomy, serious. So we have actually the the blowing of the uh, the wind wind which is creating the sound priests chant louder than ever priests actually who are uh, you know blowing you know the conch shell and uh, reciting the hymns and the mouth of india opens Look at the image of the mouth of India opens, which describes the starvation, the poverty of uh, India. The poet has created audio visual picture uh, here in these lines and sewing onomatopoeic effect is there. You see, so we have audio uh, visual picture here in these lines. Crocodiles move into deeper waters. Then we have the, you know, image of the crocodile, uh, which are moving into the deeper water due to the, you know, excessive heat. Now, mornings of heated middens. Middens is actually the, uh, you know, the dung hill. Uh, mornings of heated midden smoke under the sun. Some kind of a smoke is actually there, which is coming from the heated, uh, you know, heated uh, middens, that is the dung hills. The, you know, midden is actually a, a heap, especially of, you know, the kitchen uh, refuse. Now, uh, while describing this, uh, you know, blowing of the wind and uh, the chanting of the hymns by the priest and the, you know, uh, India's mouth open and the crocodile in the deep water and the smoke of the heat, you know, say the good wife lies in my bed. Personal touch is there. He's talking about his wife who is lying in the bed in the afternoon, still dreaming and she's unexhausted but the deep roar of the funeral pyre description of funeral pyre is uh, is there uh, she's not affected by the funeral pyre and uh, she's lying in the bed uh, in the in the afternoon uh, i mean by the deep roar of the funeral pyre she is you know uh, unaffected that is you know uh, they take uh, the death stoically there is no, you know, effect of uh, that. And uh, unexhausted actually shows the, you know, the fondness, the commitment uh, uh, of, of wife mm, towards the, uh, the husband. So this is actually the, the, the poem Indian Summer where uh, the poet uh, through uh, exact imagery and perfect choice of the words described the Indian summer uh, along with some other, uh, you know, uh, issues. The poem is uh, uh, very small and I hope uh, I explained it uh, properly uh, to you. Thank you very much.